Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, Greg and I review the Leica Flex and Leica Flex SL, the very first two 35mm single lens reflex cameras produced by Lights between 1964 and 1974. Lights was late to the SLR game, offered quite expensive cameras here in comparison to the Japanese competitors, and at a, ta at a closer look they also offered less advanced features and uh, certainly less accessories and lenses, at least initially. They ended up being commercial failures at the time and were quite expensive in terms of the production for lights. And from today's perspectives, I would argue they are very, very interesting because the limited features can be a deliberate choice. You still get a maximum shutter speed of one two thousandths of a second. You get a fantastic build quality and a finishing to the highest uh, lights standards. And you get access to the Leica R mount lenses with these very early cameras. And um, I would argue that these are one of the best buys that you can do right now in vintage in the vintage lights universe, where most cameras have become incredibly expensive. And these here are pretty, pretty decent bargains and you get a fantastic quality for the money. Please also note that we had reviewed the Leica Flex SL2, so the last iteration in the SL series on the channel here before. Those were produced until 1976. And it's also worth mentioning that, of course, then later on, Leica transitioned to the Leica R camera system in collaboration with Minolta. And we had a dedicated video on that here before as well, taking a closer look at the collaboration and the first cameras that came out of this. And with respect to the Leica Flex and the Leica Flex SL2, Greg and I took them out in and around Würzburg um, during an overcast winter day and uh, shot some Ilford HP5 um, pushed to ISO 800 um, to enable us to also do some indoor shooting and also some Ilford FP4 uh, rated at box speed. And then we semi-stand developed these two um, rolls of film in Rodinal with a delusion of 1 to 200 and for 90 minutes in total. So let's take a closer look at these two very interesting cameras and um, discuss the features, the accessories and lenses and of course our personal impressions. The original Leica Flex released in 1964 was Lights' reluctant response to the increasing popularity of single lens reflex camera designs in the late 1950s and early 1960s. Photographer Walter Benzer famously urged Ludwig Leitz to produce a single lens reflex camera already in 1955. But back then, Lights simply lacked the expertise and was also heavily focusing on the very successful Leica M design. Um, and to try to get the most out of that. So it took a while and they only started to explore the Leica um, Flex and the single lens reflex camera in 1958. And there was a first prototype available in 1963. The first Leica Flex is also called Leica Flex Standard and introduced the new R bayonet and came with shutter speeds from one second to one two thousandths of a second as well as a mirror lockup feature. The speeds are displayed inside the viewfinder and there's a center the needle mechanism here on the right side of the viewfinder, which um, basically takes the reading from a CDS cell that lets you meter the scene and of course achieve correct exposure. The viewfinder is not fully focusing, so only in the center of the viewfinder you get um, full focusing in comparison to the later model, the Leica Flex SL, which we will get to in a minute. The flash synchronization speed is one one hundredth of a second. The design is very clean, featuring only two dials on each side and the frame counter as well as the film advance lever. The shutter release button is nestled into the shutter speed uh, dial, while the ISO dial revolves around the film crank. 
The battery compartment and small window on the front are unique to this camera, as is the silver shutter dial on this version, which is black on all later versions. Collectors also differentiate between the very first two iterations of the camera, with the Mark I being recognizable by the pie-shaped frame counter and a tripod socket with three screws, while the second version can be recognized by the round frame counter and an integrated tripod socket. And Mark II also introduced a light meter switch into the advanced lever so that it can be activated by using the lever. On the front of the camera is a three position lever that lets you control the mirror behavior. There is a normal mode for instant return with the lever in the upward position, then an, a no return with the lever in the horizontal position and the mirror lockup version with the lever in the down position. Interestingly, the mechanical construction was apparently so complicated that it was quite costly for lights to produce it. And the production was discontinued in 1968 already, after only um, 37,500 units were produced, so around 8,000 cameras per year. Only 1,000 Leica Flex were produced in black paint, which of course make these incredibly rare and um, true collector pieces from today's perspective. And furthermore, there was a limited edition um, Sumicron 50mm R in silver chrome that kind of fits the body, which has also become incredibly rare and a collector piece. And here you see these two rare pieces um, combined in this particular book. The Leica Flex SL, released in 1968, improved upon the original in important ways. The SL stands for Selective Light Meter Reading, in German Selektive Lichtmessung, which is basically a through-the-lens metering system for a 5% area in the viewfinder, which conveniently corresponds to the microprism focusing area. So you can take this area to take a very precise 5% reading, basically, um, in your viewfinder and then get a very nice correct um, meterings for instance for the shadows or for highlights and, and get a perfect exposure to your needs. And of course this is much more precise than an average metering would be. The focusing was also improved via a ground glass focusing screen with central microprism spot and now offered full frame um, focusing as mentioned before, which the Leica Flex, the original one, didn't offer and the, uh, the camera also came with a depth of field preview lever. Cosmetically, the battery compartment was moved to the bottom plate and the camera now features a black shutter speed dial and a black line as well as the letters SL here on the front of the finder and all these features of course make it easily recognizable. A special edition limited to only 1200 pieces was introduced for the Olympic Games in Munich in 1972. Um, this version here came with the Olympic circles and the 72 engraved on the top plate. And between 1972 and 74, um, a small number of SL mod models, which we have here, were produced. And these have an internal drive shaft and all relevant contacts on the bottom plate to attach a motor winder without removing the bottom plate. Um, and this model has no self-timer and not the same meter switch. Um, built in into the advanced lever like the regular models. So in this case the metering um, is always on and in, as soon as you remove the lens cap you get a light meter reading. In total around 70,900 units of the Leica Flex SL and the SOL mod together were produced in black paint and silver chrome. <laughs> So 
So what about the lenses and accessories? Back then when it was introduced, the system was relatively limited and lights only slowly added to the lineup, which also heavily contributed to the commercial failure because the cameras and accessories were so expensive. So for instance, the initial lens lineup was only a 35 millimeter, a 50 millimeter, a 90 millimeter, and a 135 millimeter lens. And of course, these came at quite a cost. Today, the Leica Flex, of course, lets you access the relatively inexpensive but fantastic Leica R-mount lenses. And in our test, we used 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, and 90 millimeter Summicron lenses, and we believe the results uh, speak for themselves. Please note that certain wide-angle lenses are not compatible with the Leica Flex cameras because of the protruding rear elements that might potentially interfere with the mirror. And also that the Leica Flex is only supported up to the so-called 3-cam lenses. As you know, in the Leica R lens lineups, there are several iterations and you always have to double check whether your camera is compatible with the respective um, iteration of the lenses. In general, I would recommend steering away from the uh, so-called ROM lenses because these have become incredibly expensive again because they are basically compatible with the modern digital Leica Flex, uh, Leica SL2 and Leica SL3 models in combination with an adapter and because of that the prices have gone up. So ideally you aim for um, 3-cam Leica R-mount lenses because the 3-cam also allows you to move upwards towards Leica R-mount um, or Leica R cameras if you are interested in that and they are still compatible with the Leica Flex models here. So this is the sweet spot, 3-cam um, lenses and most of the earlier lenses have also been updated at some point to 3-cam so you should find plenty of those on the market. The Leica Flex eventually offered a lot of accessory, uh, accessories from extension rings to flashes to of course the motor drive for the SL Mod version here. Yet the Leica Flex ne system never grew to the same size as the OM system for instance or also the professional lineups coming from Nikon or Canon. So yes, it's not the same but if you are a purist, you just want a couple of lenses, you have maybe one or two accessories in mind and they are available for the system then it certainly offers enough in terms of accessories and features. So what about the handling and our personal impressions? I was really impressed by the outstanding build quality and the overall feel of these cameras and the rich and beautiful sound of the shutter. I mean, these cameras are 50 to 60 years old and many of them still run perfectly fine and smoothly or can be still maintained. Of course, it's a little bit difficult sometimes, but they, you still find people who are able to, to maintain them and um, they often have an incredible quality and once they are maintained, they are good to go for the next 30 years. So overall, I was really impressed and what I particularly liked is the clean and honest design that these cameras come with. You can really feel how much effort went into designing these dials and integrating the buttons and making sure that you get a really beautiful lights design. I also like little touches like the light Svetzla here on the front. And um, personally, I particularly liked uh, the original Leica Flex, so the first iteration here with the um, battery compartment and the light meter window on the front. Um, these little design elements really speak to me. Um, of course, this is a matter of personal taste, but I feel like these cameras are incredibly undervalued for the kind of access that they give you to Leica R-mount lenses. Um, looking at the prices here, I also feel that they are being overshadowed by the Leica Flex SL2, so the later and final model in the series, which of course is considered the best and of course also is in many ways if you look at the features. But if you're a purist and just um, 
are fine with the kind of features these two original versions are offering you, then I think these are in an incredible bargain with currently prices ranging between 70 to 200 euro for bodies in decent to good condition. I mean, what else can you ask for? So in my opinion, these are incredibly undervalued and one of the best buys you can make um, when interested in vintage lights and Leica cameras. So I can highly, highly recommend taking a look at those. Um, the build quality is fantastic. You get a maximum shutter speed of one two thousandth of a second, which you often don't get. And you still get access to the fantastic Leica R-mount lenses, which can sometimes be had relatively inexpensively. And they certainly deliver in terms of optical quality. So overall, I can highly recommend them and would consider them um, a best buy for vintage Leica. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Analog Insights and our review of the Leica Flex and Leica Flex SL. I cannot stress it enough. These, in my opinion, are the best buys in vintage Leica these days. Um, if you look at the Leica M bodies, these have become incredibly, and I would even say prohibitively expensive and to some extent even overpriced. And all because of the access to, of course, fantastic lenses and so on. And I would argue if you want access to a 50 millimeter Summicron, take the Leica R-mount lenses into consideration as well and explore these Leica Flex cameras here. They come with super bright viewfinders, um, a fan fantastic shutter sound, fastest shutter speeds of one to thousands of a second and a remarkable build quality. Of course, they don't come with all sorts of bells and whistles. These are bare bones, single lens reflex cameras that just deliver, but they are an incredibly interesting bargain in my opinion and definitely worth taking a look. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. If you, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.